Join me live on YouTube today at 1.45 p.m. Eastern, where we'll live stream the XFL game between the St. Louis Battlehawks and the Houston Roughnecks. And now, on with our feature presentation. I want to give you an insane hypothetical scenario. Suppose the Dallas Cowboys are playing a game, and they get absolutely destroyed. They lose by a ton of points. And one of the big reasons why is because they have no offensive firepower whatsoever. I'm talking very few big plays, a lot of drop passes, and no explosion whatsoever coming out of the backfield. Obviously, if you're head coach Mike McCarthy, this isn't good. They need to fix this for next week. Now, there are many different ways that you can try going about fixing this, including changing up the scheme or signing a player that's available. However, of all the ways to do this, I want you to imagine that McCarthy decides to fix the problem by telling the man you've been watching this whole time, Trayvon Diggs, that now he is on offense. We're moving one of our best defensive players and one of the best quarterbacks in football to offense, and he's got a few days to learn everything. Good luck. Obviously, something like that seems absurd. Something like that would be ridiculed by everyone involved, and you would get absolutely lambasted and maybe even fired. Mike McCarthy isn't the brightest bowl, considering the number of episodes of dumb decisions I've had to do on him already, the most recent of which you can learn about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But I bring this insane hypothetical up, because back in 1961, if you can believe it, it happened with this man right here, Abe Woodson. In 1961, San Francisco 49ers head coach Red Hickey had the genius idea to just switch Abe Woodson's position in the middle of the season in an effort to generate more offense, even though Woodson was one of the best in football where he currently played. And the end result went about as well as you would expect. Because this is the story behind Abe Woodson and one of the most bizarre lineup changes in the over 75-year history of the San Francisco 49ers franchise. Before I talk about the actual position change in question, and why it seems so ridiculous on the surface, we need some context to understand just who Abe Woodson is, and the game in question that forced Red Hickey to make this change. This player right here, as you might have been able to guess, is Abe Woodson, and he was a key piece in San Francisco's defense. He was coming off of a 1959 season where he started every game at cornerback, and finished second on the team in interceptions only behind Pro Bowl safety Dave Beaker, and a 1960 season where, once again, he started every game in the secondary. San Francisco's defensive backfield was pretty consistent on a year-to-year -year basis. Out of a possible 96 games that the combination of Jerry Murdens, Abe Woodson, Dave Baker, and Eddie Dove could have started over those two seasons, they started 95. It was an extremely cohesive unit, and it was one of the reasons why in 1960, the 49ers finished the season with the number one defense in football, allowing just 17.1 points per game, while allowing the second fewest passing touchdowns and the fourth fewest passing yards. The run defense wasn't anything spectacular, but their pass defense, which made the team have the winning record that it did, and the number one defense in the league that it did, was exceptional. So let's get that very clear. Abe Woodson was a very good piece of a secondary. However, if you know the former second round pick out of Illinois best, you know him as one of the best kick returners in the history of the sport. Woodson might have been the first true return man in NFL history in the sense that everyone feared him, almost in the same vein that people feared Brian Mitchell, or Mel Gray, or Desmond Howard, or Devin Hester, or Leon Washington, or Rick Upchurch, or any of those guys that came after him. Woodson was really the one that started it all. As one writer described Woodson on the 49ers, Abe Woodson just does more damage in less time than any other player in the game today. It's like a guy getting an Academy Award for a picture when he only has two lines, or the spear carrier walking off with the opera. They keep it away from him any way they can. He had great instincts, and he was blazing best. Back in college, when he was at Illinois, he was basically a human cheat code. Back in 1955, 
at the 70 yard low hurdles, he ran a time of 7.9 seconds, which was a Big Ten record at the time. And just to prove that it wasn't a fluke, one week before that, he won another event in the conference by doing that in 8 seconds. When he entered the NFL draft, he was considered by many to be the fastest player in the entire class, and it's not hard to see why. And he used that to his advantage on kickoff returns and punt returns. He scored seven special teams touchdowns in his career with the 49ers, with five of them being kickoff returns, making him the second most accomplished kick returner in NFL history at the time. Woodson ended his career with 166 kickoff returns for the Niners. Now those returns, he averaged an astonishingly high 29.4 yards per return. For some perspective on that, among players in NFL history at the time, to have at least 150 kickoff returns, not only was Woodson first, but it wasn't even close, as second place was held by Al Carmichael, who played pro football with the Green Bay Packers and the Denver Broncos from 1953-61. to 61. He had 25.1 yards per return. This meant that Woodson led NFL history in this category by more than 4 yards, that is absolutely insane, and shows how good he was. And for his efforts, Woodson made it to five Pro Bowls over his career, and was named an AP First Team All-Pro twice, winning the award in back-to-back -back years in 1959 and 1960. Keep that in mind. Woodson was just about the best thing that the Niners had going for them. He was an asset on defense, and was just about the greatest kick returner in NFL history at the time, on special teams. But after the 49ers lost the game badly to the Green Bay Packers in week two of the 1961 season, losing 30 to 10, head coach Red Hickey decided that it was time for a change. Some drastic changes actually. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage from this game as it's been lost throughout history. So we'll stick with the Abe Woodson highlights, which will become highly relevant in just a moment. Never mind the fact that the Packers were supposed to be the best team in the NFL in 1961, and were coming off of an appearance in the NFL Championship the year before. Never mind the fact that the 49ers looked completely fine on offense the previous week against Washington, when they won 35-3, had just under 400 yards of total offense, and easily could have done more if they didn't call off the Hounds in the fourth quarter, seeing as all 35 points were scored in the first three quarters of action. Never mind the fact that even though this Packers game was bad, as they turned it over three times and only had 233 net yards of offense, that it easily just could have been an off day. And never mind the fact that after this game, head coach Red Hickey had nothing bad to say about the offense, blaming the loss of a special team's coverage units on punts and kickoffs. Nope. It was time for some wholesale changes. With that, immediately after the game, this man right here, Red Hickey, made five moves to shake up the team. Move number one, J.W. Lockett, the undrafted rookie fullback who scored the only touchdown of the game for the 49ers against the Packers and started both games thus far. He's now been traded to the Dallas Cowboys. Move number two, running back Ray Norton, who the team drafted in the fourth round back in 1960. He's now on waivers. Move number three, Bill Cooper, the team's third round pick from this year, he's now active after missing the past few weeks with a pulled muscle. Move number four, Jimmy Johnson, the team's first round pick, you're also now active. Side note, Johnson eventually made the Hall of Fame, so this pick was a home run. But move number five, it involved the man of the hour, this man right here, Abe Woodson. Because as it turns out, we need you on offense. I know you've never played offense in the NFL, and you haven't really played offense since you occasionally played some in Illinois back in 1956 more than half a decade ago. But congratulations, you're now one of our running backs. That's right. Despite making multiple Pro Bowls and receiving multiple first team All Pro nominations over the past two seasons, despite being an anchor in San Francisco's secondary, and despite this being the middle of the season, so it's not even like it's the offseason where he's got a chance to learn the playbook and adjust, Abe Woodson was now moving to running back. 
This also ignores the obvious flaw that, naturally, after Woods Simmer throws a kickoff or a punt, the 49ers are on offense, and Woodson is tired, so he can't even be that effective of a running back until later in the drive when he's got his breath and his stamina back. Abe Woodson, in the middle of the freaking season, was switching from defense to offense. Woodson took the surprising news with a sense of humor and told reporters upon hearing the announcement, I guess I'll have to train my leg muscles all over again to go forward instead of backward. But it raises the obvious question, why on earth did Hickey do it? This is like if the Miami Dolphins were struggling in the secondary, so they figured the solution would be to move Tyreek Hill to cornerback. Well, as Red Hickey said on this, the object is to give us more striking power from both our tight backs. Which, as a side note, is just another turn for a halfback, but with different terminology. Continuing on, Hickey said, We've got to have more from them. There's no question of that. We've been getting great running out of J.D. Smith, who had 195 rushing yards over 6 yards per carry through two weeks, and was one of the top runners in football. But we need another barrel. We think E. Woodson will give it to us once he makes the adjustment. Again, it's a strategy that doesn't seem to make any sense. We need to improve our running back position, so we're going to move a player over in the middle of the season who might not be able to play the position, who doesn't know the playbook, and hasn't been training to play the position, and also create a hole at cornerback in the process. It's like if you're playing outside and your ball gets stuck in the tree, so you decide to solve your problem, by getting your kite out of the garage and throwing it up to try and knock the ball down. Like, that's not gonna get the ball out of the tree. That's just gonna get the kite stuck too. And you're going to have two problems now instead of one. It's a dumb idea, especially midway through the season and with one of your best and most important players too. However, to the shock of just about everyone, Red Hickey was kind of a genius because this plan actually worked. When the 49ers played the Minnesota Vikings in what was Woodson's highly anticipated first game on offense, he dazzled everyone. The Metropolitan Stadium crowd had no idea what they were witnessing, but they were in the midst of one of the greatest individual performances of all time. He burst through the line, he broke tackles, he juked out defenders left, right, and center. After one game, he was already looking like one of the greatest running backs in the sport and was looking like a dr- I'm just kidding, he fumbled three times and got benched. You didn't seriously think he was going to do well, did you? This experiment had disaster win all over it from the start. I think it's safe to say that three fumbles is kind of a disaster, especially when you're riding the pie for the entire second half because of it. There's a reason why all the highlights you've been watching of him are of him on defense and special teams, and not on offense, because his offensive play was downright offensive. He had 23 rushing yards total in 1961 on a mere 1.6 yards per carry, never finding the end zone on the ground, and never played offense again after that. For some perspective on how ineffective Woodson was as a runner, that season, excluding quarterbacks, he was one of 43 players in the NFL to have at least 14 rushing attempts. His average of 1.6 yards per carry ranked 41st out of 43, only ahead of Joe Morrison of the New York Giants and John Adams of the Chicago Bears, who was so bad that he actually had fewer rushing yards on those 14 attempts than President John Adams did that season, and he had been dead since 1826. The Woodson experiment was a failure, and he never took another offensive snap after 1961, and for good reason. Oh, and the passing defense went from number one in football and allowing the fourth fewest passing yards to number four in football and allowing the sixth most passing yards, actually finishing in the bottom half of the league in that category and becoming somewhat of a liability. Who knew that this would have failed? Who could have seen this coming aside from, I don't know, Literally anyone with the brain. Abe Woodson was a great player, don't get me wrong. He's one of the greatest return men of all time, 
and he was a very good defender too. But not everyone can be good at everything. And in 1961, Woodson and the 49ers found this out the hard way when they tried to kill two birds with one stone and wound up killing neither. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.